Welcome to the Female BC Lab Podcast. I have Danny here. Danny, in one line, give me your name, your title, and the name of your fund. Yeah. So my name is Danny Tran. I'm a senior associate at Convoy Ventures. Wonderful. So what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or an investor? Yeah. So how I ended up in VC came really from a love of video games more than anything. Huh? So I've been playing games. games. Awesome. Yeah. So I've been playing games since I was about five years old and it's always been a huge part of my life. And so I always knew that I wanted to end up in the gaming industry. But professionally, I got my career start in management consulting. Frankly, I took more of an unconventional route in. I studied engineering, but at the last minute realized that I really didn't want to go into aerospace. It's a story for another time, but I ended up landing at McKinsey and focusing more on consumer products and retail. I think that helped scratch that gaming itch a bit, at least in the near term. I still love to work in consumer tech today. I think being able to work with companies or on products that people use every day is pretty pretty magical. But it when I awesome. finally... It is. It is. When I finally felt ready to make that transition to a gaming company, I joined Activision Blizzard and I joined their strategy. Yeah. And I joined their corporate strategy and M&A team. But despite that translation of function from McKinsey and the opportunity to work for such a large player in the space, I realized what I really wanted to do was to be a part of the shaping of what gaming was going to be like in the future. And I think the best way to do that is with startups. And I think being a VC helps me do that at scale. That's awesome. So this is a tangent question, which doesn't normally happen, but I used to go to E3 all the time. Activision yeah. Blizzard had a massive booth, all the, <laughs> all the great things are now it's dead. So yeah. how do you, what do you think about that? It's definitely sad just seeing one of the most prolific gaming conferences come to a close like that. I think, but I do think that it's not to say that all of gaming or all of gaming conferences coming to an end. I do think that there are other conferences that have really popped up that more specifically address different areas of the industry, right? You have like the needs of developers, you have the needs of publishers, Mm -hmm. but also as fans, right? We there There are other outlets that we have both online and in person to really share that love of games and talk about the future of games with other gamers. In short, definitely sad, but I'm still very optimistic about the future of in-person meetups like that. That's good to know. I thought I would throw that out since that just happened yesterday. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Off tangent, but relevant though, since you Mm -hmm. love me. So... Tell me a little bit about your thesis there at Convoy and the motivation behind the thesis. Yes. So Convoy's investment thesis is focused on the tech platforms and infrastructure for gaming and interactive entertainment. Oh, wow. Yeah. So interactive entertainment is really intentionally a broad and gray area. But how I like to describe it is where gaming intersects with really any other industry unrelated to gaming. So not just things in the entertainment world, but also industries like education, e-commerce, health and wellness. I think Duolingo is like the go-to example that I use when trying to describe that intersection between gaming and another industry. That's a good example. I like that. Mm -hmm. And so the motivation for our thesis is really in twofold. And one is we believe that testing, sorry, gaming provides a testing ground for technology at scale. And very few things have the same, (laughs) very few things (laughs) just have the same reach and engagement like games, right? There are certain games that have millions, tens of millions of daily active users per day. Hundreds of millions of users a day. (laughs) And, and very few people are as fickle as gamers, right? Gamers are also that type of user base. Developers that are that kind of fickle, but <laughs> next true, to developers, gamers are equally. Gamers, for and, sure. And, so and, and anime fans learn. as well. They're fickle as well. Yeah, for sure. They definitely learn from each other, right? And yes. so gamers do provide that feedback, which is actually mm-hmm. really helpful to developers, to people that are Absolutely. implementing that technology and more. And so that's really more on like that enterprise tech side. But we do also invest on the consumer side as well. And so we just, we also have the belief that gaming and other forms of interactive entertainment are really the future of the social square. More and more time are spent in these like online multiplayer spaces. And we only, th- we think that's only going to increase. So this is another question that Norma don't ask, but do you see when you talk about interactive, do you also Mm -hmm. look at kind of the play between online and offline kind of gaming or like bringing a game into the physical world potentially? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. I think bringing gaming into the physical world is something that we talk about all the time. I think Pokemon Go was really like the game that really brought that into the mainstream, right? But I do think that there are certain tech, like certain technologies and consumer products that are slowly being rolled out that are really going to enable that at scale. I think we're still in the early phases right now. I think Apple is like, they're going to be releasing their mixed reality headset very soon. And really Apple is one of, one of, is like one of, one of the largest tech companies in the world. Right when they roll out a technology like that, it it is going to in, it incentivize and influence other companies to build ancillary products as competitors or yeah. around that type of technology. So we do think that yeah, that's definitely the future. <laughs> wow, that's cool, awesome. So, what are you currently learning or listening to or reading these days? Yeah, this is actually a little bit outside of gaming, but I do think touches upon that gaming X fitness, gaming X health and wellness space that I do tend to look at. But I play a pretty niche sport competitively. So recently I've been trying to level up the way that I think about my own health. So I've been trying to more recently, I've been trying to learn as much as I can about fitness across primarily across weight training and cardio mostly. But one of the my favorite books that I'm actually rereading right now is called Why We Sleep. Super interesting, a little bit scary, but definitely an encouragement to just prioritize sleep and rest. We all live very busy lives. So making the time for that kind of thing is very important. And then one of the podcasts yeah. that I, I'm really loving right now is the, the Huberman Lab. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a good one. I watch him on TikTok sometimes or YouTube short yeah. or something like that. Yeah. This is so interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So in two years, how do you see venture capital or investing having changed Mm -hmm. or evolved? Yeah. Yeah. We're in a pretty difficult landscape right now, right? Mm -hmm. I think most VCs starting at the beginning of this year, if not the the end of, towards the end of law, encouraging their portfolio to just survive over the next couple of years. And frankly, honestly, I just don't think 2024 is going to be that much different than 2023. But I am very optimistic about 2025. I think that is when we are going to return to a more normal stage of venture investing. But that's not to say that next year is going to be impossible or it's going to be, it's not going to be impossible. I actually think there's going to be very innovative ways that people get involved involved in venture investing. I think certain things that we have talked about here internally is do you, we haven't personally invested with these types of structures, but I do think that difficult times really motivate the innovation in this space. Okay. Things like milestone-based financing, more encouraging mm-hmm. of debt-based financing when it comes to user acquisition, more creative ways to structure venture capital as a whole. Yeah. But ho- hopefully two years from now, we've returned more to normal and that and, the, and these things that people come up with next year is just a a part of how we think about venture. That's interesting because if you look at the, I'll say fallout, I've been reading a lot, like all these startups are dying. It's interesting. Maybe they should die. No one wants their, no, I don't like to see, oh, your dream died, right? That was somebody's dream and passion and excitement. But I like the thought of maybe venture needs to reimagine how they deploy money mm-hmm. and capital right. and venture capital and what makes sense from that aspect of it. And then in the end, to be a company, you have to have customers. Mm-hmm. So what does that look like? Like as a venture mm-hmm. capitalist, like sometimes we forget at some point you want them to break even and make a profit. You yeah, don't want them yeah. to be in the whole, right? Like venture capital is the revenue. I think we got it backwards at some levels. Yeah. And that what was something you touched upon there is like the innovation on business models. And mm-hmm. that's something that we saw in gaming specifically that I actually think is going to be like, like one of those things that companies are going to shift over maybe the next year, two years in order to compensate for a more difficult fundraising environment. But the yeah. thing that I'm talking about was the rise of the battle pass. And so the battle pass, just for listeners that are unfamiliar, is really the application of a subscription based model to games, which historically yes. have been like you, uh, they're unit based, you buy the entire game yes. or yes. microtransaction based, yes. right? And so that forced a shift, right? And, but Absolutely. every every mainstream AAA game is offering some forms of sub- subscription right now, whether or not that's through through their own game or through something like Battle Pass. So right. uh, definitely super interesting thing to think about. And that's interesting, right? And some of that was because of pandemic, because mm-hmm. everyone was at home and then no one could go buy a game. So then how are you now going to ship your title to someone? Yeah. And then now how do you continue to evolve on those business models and revenue models, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe Mm -hmm. battle passes apart, you're still doing microtransactions, you're still Mm -hmm. there's still some parts of the 
gaming economy that are there, but mm-hmm. now you've added on an additional revenue stream. And then mm-hmm. some people like it, some people don't, but that's just, that. it's an evolution mm-hmm. in general. Yeah, totally. All right. So how do people contact you? Yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn message or email. I actually pride myself on responding to everybody. So even if you just want to come and say hello or talk about games, yeah, feel free to shoot me a message on LinkedIn or an email. All right. Thank you so much, Danny Tran from Convoy for being my guest on the Female VC Lab podcast. (laughs) Thank you.